Number 40. A large piece of jewelry has a mass of 132.6 grams. A graduated cylinder initially contains 48.6 milliliters of water. When the jewelry is submerged in the graduated cylinder, the total volume increases to 61.2 milliliters. A. Determine the density of this piece of jewelry. Okay, so if I scan this question, I see that they tell me that I have a mass of this. So I'm just going to put that this is a mass. And now they give me two volumes. I have to recognize that milliliter is a unit for volume. And another mil is a unit for volume. And they're asking for density. So the formula that pops to mind, which is the first formula that you guys should memorize, is D equals M over V. Density, D, I'll put that over here, density is equal to mass divided by volume. Are there standard units for this formula? Not really, but normally the standard units are I'm just going to put this here. Density is usually grams per mils or grams per centimeter cubed. Now, I want to put over here that if you're talking about water, H2O, water, ml, milliliters, and centimeters cubed are the same exact thing. So you can interchange them only for water, though. Generally speaking, in your chemistry class, though, majority of the time it will be uh, with water, so you can interchange the two. So I'll say this is standard. So the conversion is 1 mil, 1 ml equals 1 centimeter cubed. That's why they're exactly identical to each other for water. Um, mass is usually going to be in grams, and volume is either going to be that mils, milliliters, or centimeters cubed. Just depends on what they give you. Okay, so for letter A, they want to know, find the density. Well, they gave me the mass, which is 132.6 grams. So D equals 132.6 grams divided by, well, now here I have to find the volume. Now, it's always going to be the volume of the object that they're talking to you about. However, in this case, we're talking about a graduated cylinder that has water. This is finding the volume by something called displacement. Just a fancy way of saying change in volume. Now, let me draw you a quick little picture here. Let's just say that I had a nice graduated cylinder. Wow. And then... I'm going to just show the change, so I have two graduated cylinders. Okay. Before we even put the jewelry in, we have to know how much volume of water there is. It said that a graduated cylinder initially contained 46.8 mils of water. So that's initially. I'm going to put that level up here. So this, before you even dropped the jewelry in, this was 48.6 mils. But now, what happened after you dropped the jewelry in? The volume rose. So the volume appears higher because there's more stuff in the graduated cylinder. So with more stuff, this piece of jewelry, this red thing, of course the volume's going to go up. You didn't add any water. It just shows that you did. That's the displacement of the jewelry. So now the new volume is 61.2 mils. But now, how are you going to find the volume of the actual jewelry? By displacement, by finding the change. So V of the object is the final volume, so I'll put VF minus VI. And that's what's going to be your volume of the object. In this case, it's the large piece of jewelry. So first, got to find out what that volume of the object is, and then we could find the density. So I'm going to put that down here. I'm going to say 61.2 mils minus 48.6 mils. Now plug that into your calculator. 61.2 minus 48.6 is 12.6 mils. 
That's the volume of the jewelry. And that's what's going to be going into this spot right here. So I'm going to just put that in here, 12.6 mils. And now I can calculate density equals 132.6 divided by 12.6 which is 10.5. Now, up until this point, we didn't talk about significant digits. There was no questions on significant digits up until this point. So technically, it doesn't matter. But once we start doing sig figs, then I will go by those rules. Just let, let you let the, uh, just let you know that this is the correct amount of sig figs. And grams per mils, but since it was in water, I could say that this density was also equal to 10.5 grams per centimeters cubed because mils and centimeters cubed are the same exact thing. So that's the answer for letter A. Just box off both of them or one of them or whatever you choose. Now for letter B. It says, assuming that the jewelry is made from only one substance, what substance is it likely to be? Explain. This is where we use our densities of common substances list. Now let's think. Are we going to use solids, liquids, or gases? Well, it's a piece of jewelry, and jewelry only exists as a solid. So we could get rid of this liquid column, and we can get rid of this gas column. Now if it's only one substance, it's a pure substance, and they give us a list of densities of these substances, ice, oak or wood, iron, copper, lead, silver, and gold. We just have to find out what substance it's likely to be. Well, guess what? A density is a standard property. It is not based off of matter. So therefore, no matter, what, no matter how much you have of it, it's going to stay exactly the same. So if this jewelry was 10.5 grams per centimeters cubed, I'm just going to scan this chart to see which one has the same exact density. And it seems here that silver is the answer because silver has 10.5 as well. So this would be made out of silver. Explain because the density is the same number. It's the same standard property. It's the same number. All silver, if it's a pure substance, will have that same density. All right, guys. Hope this helped out. If it did, hit that subscribe button. It would help us out a lot. I hope you guys have a great day and happy studying. All right. See you all in the next question. Bye-bye.